This here is a GTX 650, and although it's several years old at this point, it's available right now on AliExpress for $30. So today, we're gonna benchmark 10 games with it and see if it's worth your money. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we're gonna to be benchmarking the GTX 650, which is very easy to buy right now, and seeing if it's worth your money here in 2018. And if you wanna see more graphics card videos or benchmarking videos, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell. That way you never miss an episode. But yeah, let's check this thing out. So this specific graphics card is the quote Asus 1 gigabyte GDDR5, which is apparently rocking a core clock of 1050 megahertz. The reason why I say quote Asus is because, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is either a legit Asus card that wasn't released here in the US, or it's a knockoff version which is pretty typical over on AliExpress. Either way, if you search on Google for Asus GTX 650, you're not gonna find a graphics card that looks like this, except on AliExpress, but either way, this thing only costs 30 bucks right now, so we're gonna benchmark it anyway. Also, please keep in mind that this specific GTX 650 requires a 6-pin PSU connector and at least a 300 watt power supply. Our testing platform today is our normal testing rig, which is rocking a Ryzen 5 2600X, 8GB of DDR4 RAM clocked at 2933 MHz, and the games are installed on a standard Western Digital hard drive. Now yes, this processor far surpasses the GTX 650 in terms of performance. Nobody on this planet is going to pair a $30 GPU with a Ryzen 5, but by setting it up this way, this graphics card will be the bottleneck, and then we can see the very max performance that this card can do. I'm explaining all this because there's always someone in the comment section saying something like, oh, you got 50 FPS and I only got 30. Well, it's most likely due to your CPU. Just be aware that the results you're about to see are the max this card is capable of, and then if you have a super budget CPU, you're probably not going to get as good of frame rate. Games like Doom rely heavily on the graphics card and the CPU doesn't make that big of a difference, but on the flip side, games like CSGO rely heavily on the CPU and the GPU doesn't make that big of a difference. With all that out of the way, the first game up was Fortnite and here I put the game settings at 1080p and medium. Here I averaged very close to that target 60fps mark and hit 58. I actually fully benchmarked this game with a ton of other budget GPUs in a separate video, so check that one out if you want to see more. Next up was CSGO, like I talked about earlier. And and here in 1080p with high settings and no anti-aliasing, I averaged a very smooth 88 FPS. You could definitely crank these settings down a bit if you wanted to achieve higher FPS for those higher refresh rate monitors. Next up was Dota 2. Like I say in all of my benchmarking videos, please ignore my very noob gameplay for this because I have no idea what I'm doing in MOBAs. Here in 1080p with medium settings or that second notch from the left, I averaged 107 FPS. I use these settings because if you went to the next slider notch, it would be down to like the 40s but you could easily tweak these settings to split the difference. PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds was up next, and this was the first game I had to lower to 720p. This is also a CPU dependent game, so take that for what it's worth. In 720p with very low settings, aka as low as they go, I averaged 44, which is still definitely playable. Sure, it doesn't look that great, but PUBG is a tough game to run. GTA 5 followed, and in 1080p with normal settings and no anti-aliasing, I averaged an impressive 55 FPS, and as you can see, it stayed pretty consistent because the 0.1% low only went down to 40. Doom was up next, a very, very GPU dependent game like I said earlier, and in 720p and low settings, I could only average 39. Keep in mind that this was still definitely playable if you wanted to, but this game had the GTX 650 begging for mercy. Next I ran Project Cars 2, which is a very pretty game to look at, and in 1080p with the lowest settings, I averaged 39. This might not sound high, but again, as you can see, it stayed pretty consistent and easily playable. The fairly new Warhammer Vermintide 2 was up next. I definitely need to play this game more by the way. And in 1080p in the lowest settings, I averaged an impressive 44 FPS. This game isn't easy to run, so I was pretty happy with these results. And finally, the last game on our list was Far Cry 5, which definitely cripples budget graphics cards like the 650. In 720p in low settings with no anti-aliasing, I only managed to crank out an average of 25 FPS. The in-game Far Cry 5 benchmark is one of the toughest games to run right now, and as you can see, it definitely beat up on this card. So those are the results. The GTX 650 can handle any game you throw at it as long as you're willing to knock down the settings. For less graphically demanding games to run like CSGO or Dota, you can usually run about 1080p and medium, but 
but for more graphically intense games like PUBG, you're gonna have to crank it down to 720p. I'm definitely glad I picked up this GTX 650 for just 30 bucks because after seeing these results, I would personally say that it's worth it if you're looking for a GPU around this price range. Sure, you could definitely find a much better deal if you're patient and snipe a good bargain, but the fact that this card is available right now on AliExpress with free shipping, it's pretty baller. Well, that wraps up my review of the GTX 650 here in 2018. I've been making a lot of videos like this recently, such as the R7 360, so make sure you check out those videos if you haven't already. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please drop a like down below to help support my channel. And as always, thank you for watching. And please subscribe for more Zach's Tech Turf videos.